Live from FedEx Forum, this is The Odds Couple on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Here's Rob Fisher and Lang Whitaker. Hello, good people. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome to the Odds Couple, Chapter 5, Week 31 of the program. Week 31 of the program. 31. And it is a big, big show today. We have some gambling news uh, that we're going to talk about. <laughs> a lot. News uh, in the gambling. Gambling. Us, the shirt. The gambling. Uh, also, uh, we have uh, we have the NCAA tournament is, yeah. is going on. We are in the Sweet 16. We got the women's national tournament as well in the Sweet 16. Some uh, interesting stuff there that we'll get into. Uh, we got uh, the debut of UFL football that CJ's going to break down coming up a little oh, bit later football. in the show. Yeah, that's going to be neat. I that's saw neat. UFL preview and I thought it was like the mixed martial arts. No, 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 no. That's, uh, it's, that's uh, the, the football, new, the yeah. XFL-USFL yeah. merger. And uh, yeah. it debuts this week. So looking forward to that. We'll have the odds, tell you the odds on that. And uh, free picks. At the end of the show. What about the NIT, Major League Baseball? NIT, started? CBI, baseball starting. Yeah, yes, we have it's a so whole much. lot of stuff. Yes, uh, so this is going to be, we got too much show, uh, basically, for you today. Uh, let me introduce the whole crew. I'm Rob Fisher, uh, by the way. Uh, this is Lang Whitaker. Hey, Hello, Rob. Lang. I, I, I've already changed my um, opinion on opening day of baseball. We Earlier today, Rob and I taped the... Uh, infield Fly, our baseball podcast. Baseball podcast and I told here you on I was Grind already City ticked Media. off on opening day because the Braves have opening day on Thursday against the Phillies, Friday off, mm -hmm. and then the season starts Saturday, Sunday. And then in the meantime, between us taping that and this, they just announced opening the, the opening day game on Thursday has already rained out. They canceled it. So now we're going to open on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, yeah, three see? days in a row. So it worked out, it worked for, out you. for It me. worked out for you. Good. I'm glad that worked. Make sure you tune in to Infield Fly each and every week during the baseball season on, right here on Grind City Media. John Roser. What up? How are you, sir? Great. You can uh, hear John Roser uh, on the Chris Vernon show. You daily. can. Yeah. How, yeah. What's going on? I'm there. <laughs> what's up? It's good to see you. Finally unmuted your stories on Instagram today. Yeah, I found that a little disheartening. Why'd you mute him? I was uh, muted I, by Rosa. It was uh, when the 49ers lost the Super Bowl. In, I muted. There's God knows how many accounts I follow that I muted, like sports stuff that just I knew were going to post stuff about the Chiefs, and I just went ahead and <laughs> proactively muted them. Uh, it's like I don't so it was see like it. a three-month ban. Yeah, well, I just remembered it when I saw you because... <laughs> Because Fish said, hey, we're going to do an odds couple show, like, you know, last week. We're going to do one on the NCAA tournament, but I'm not going to be here for it. Um, so I couldn't tell you last week. Yeah, yeah. So, Understood. you know. Okay, well, I'm glad. I'm yeah. glad I'm unmuted. Thank you very much. Yeah. I, you talk some shooty hoops. You have done some incredible Instagram stories work the last three months. I have. Yeah, it's pretty funny that Roser missed, missed all the And I've decided yeah. not to do it anymore. That tribute so. to Roser you did last week was awesome. Thank there. you very much. Uh, I, oh, I yeah, put a lot of time into that. That was a great tribute. <laughs> It was really about your friendship that you guys have yep. had through yeah. the years. That's and, right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. It had sad Old music photos, and everything. Yeah, it was yeah. amazing. Yeah. Sarah McLaughlin music on it. Mm -hmm. Violins. Violins. Yeah. CJ Hurt is here. Hello, CJ. How the hell did you get Tom Rinaldi to read off that script you had on the Rosa tribute with Sarah McLaughlin <laughs> yeah. right? playing in the, in the no, background? He's a, he's a friend. It, it moved friend. me to tears. It he's was really beautiful. Yeah. Rosa, I wish you could have seen it, man. Yeah. yeah, it was amazing. That's the thing about stories, though. It's there for a day hours. and then it's gone. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. can't see it, Rosa. I'm yeah. sorry. It was beautiful, though. <laughs> it was. And uh, everybody write in. Tell John how it was uh, yeah. that follow me on the IG at the Fish Nation underscore. Um, all right, we got, a, we got a big show. We've learned a couple of things this week. Let's get into this first and get all it right. out of the way. The Shohei Otani and his interpreter, Ipe, uh, who was fired by the Dodgers uh, for apparently Otani stealing money from he, Otani, four fired, and a half million. Fired by Otani, not by the Dodgers, right? I believe. Uh, did he work for the Dodgers or did he, he works work for, for Otani? The, I believe he works for the Dodgers. Okay. Because uh, the Dodgers fired him. Even though he's Otani's best friend for yeah. many years. No, that's not true anymore. Not anymore, but for oh, many it's years. it's not. It's not. <laughs> no, well, Shohei said they weren't ever they weren't really a, best Shohei friends. Shohei said they were never oh, friends. I which, think this guy's being taken care of to take the fall. I think Ipe um, is being taken care of. How, how did Ipe get $4.5 million in debt and steal right. it from Otani and right. Shohei not know anything? Yes, Ipe is, told ESPN he knew everything. He knows more about me than my wife. And then yeah. came out the next day and said, no, that's, that's yeah. not true. No. Here's the, this is, the, all right. 
So as long as he was as long as he wasn't betting on baseball, or they were not betting on baseball, specifically, yeah, as long as they're not betting on baseball, this is not a big deal. The only reason this is even something is because sports gambling is illegal in California. Yeah. It's the only reason it is. Correct. If this is going on in Tennessee or, say, Illinois, if you played for the Cubs, well, you can gamble on sports in Illinois. So if you're doing it in Illinois, you just do it at a casino instead. His well, guy would just take well, the money to the casino wait, instead. The one issue would be like, if, if he was $4.5 million in debt. That's sort of an issue. It's not that. Bruno even Mars if, is... Yeah, Bruno, Bruno, Mar- Bruno, Bruno Mars is $50, 50 million, million dollars in debt, debt yeah. allegedly. Yeah. Four and a half million. That next album nothing. is going to be great. They'll, they'll let the, uh, how much do you think James Harden's in debt in Vegas? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we know we've heard the James Harden stories. To the strippers? In Vegas. Oh, never mind. Yeah. That um, too. <laughs> no, but you can't. Like we've seen NFL players suspended for a season for gambling. They gambled on football though. Okay. Calvin Ridley did. Okay. Yeah, okay. Calvin Ridley was betting Touché. on. Yeah, well, the, 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 the thing was like. But he yeah. wasn't playing. Like, yeah. Calvin Ridley was not playing in these games. He, he, he's, like, betting parlays, too, which yeah. that right there means you shouldn't be suspended at all for that because, like, parlays, is that's just dumb stuff we all do. That means you, you're you really not doing anything based off information. You're just being an idiot trying to, trying get, to get big. Pete yeah. Rose said he didn't bet on baseball. Yeah, but he did, right? He did, yeah. yeah. He, he said he didn't bet said on he did. his own team, right? Or did he say that he did? I don't I no, don't remember. He said he only bet on the Reds to win, I'm pretty yeah. sure. Yeah, something yeah, like that. Like if, uh, but, but, I mean, I'm just I'm saying, Shohei, Shohei has said everything that he wants to say now, but isn't, isn't there much more yes. to the Time story? Will tell. There's going to be a paper trail of what he bet on. Like, yeah. it'll get out. So we'll find out. If, if, if he, they're betting on college football, that's amazing. No, <laughs> if, that's, if that's what these dudes from Japan are betting on, they get over here in America, and they're like, like, oh, college football. Might be betting on Japanese yeah, baseball. Like, yeah. Go. NASCAR or something like yeah, that. Right. Yeah, right. It'd be, be amazing. Cool. I, I, I think that Shoei is like, I don't think he knew. But I think that that guy is a legitimate friend of his. And if you've got Shoei Otani money and you know you're about to break the bank with the next deal, and your buddy's like, hey, I'm in a little bit of trouble. I need like four and a half a million. How much did he, he just sign for? Out? Like six hundred million? Yeah, but it's all deferred. Yeah, yeah. So, but he, he has like he supposedly makes fifty million a year in endorsements, basically. Yeah. But I, I read a lot about that this whole thing this week, and a couple of things. One was that a lot of professional gamblers were pointing out, like, all right, if you're the interpreter and you're not getting money from Otani, who is giving you a four point five million dollar line of credit? When you make what four hundred his grand? salary was somewhere between two hundred and four hundred thousand a year. Yeah. So like, who says okay, you're good for it? You know, without knowing that somebody has somebody to vouch, something has to vouch for you, or, you, or there's got to be collateral. The other thing a lot of people on Twitter keep pointing out is like, well, how how could Otani not know? You know, how would you miss? And they yeah. were saying that it's probably what would be likely would be that whoever took the money out of the account was doing it in like $10,000 increments, small, smaller, you know, relative. That's to what happened to Kevin Hart. He had an assistant get yeah. him for a couple million and they were just taking a little bit out at a time. Yeah. Hmm. So I don't know what happened. I, the whole thing's crazy. I, the, the way it broke, the way it went down where the, the translator came out and was like, yeah, I was in debt and he covered for me. And then the next day they're like, no, 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 never mind. Right. None of that was true. Like the whole thing seems really weird yeah. and I don't know what happens. All I know is we got to get, that translator on the odds couple. <laughs> Ipe? Get Ipe? Yeah. Well, we don't know how much he won. Well, we need to know what to fade. We need to know what to fade. How, how much? Yeah, he's not a good gambler. Yeah, right? <laughs> that, that's the one thing is maybe he's just a terrible gambler. Like, yeah. He might just be the worst gambler in the world. Possibly. Yeah. Which, which may be why he's, to Rose's point, he's gambling on college football. Like, they don't follow that over in no. Japan. He's like, oh, I'm going to throw some money down on some of these teams. I bet. I bet Oregon screwed him He's against Washington. Like, These Vanderbilt helmets look real cool. When they show <laughs> video of Otani at an NCAA tournament game. Somebody's like, I know, I know the look when somebody's sweating a parlay. I know that look. Uh, then we have the Jonte Porter story. Uh, Is this one more concerning? Yes, because he's betting on himself and betting unders. Isn't the first question, Allegedly. where is this book that's giving Jonte Porter props? Man. Yeah. Well, clearly it was one of them was DraftKings. Clearly. Wow. One of them was DraftKings because they, they put out their reports on what oh, the most it was bet the biggest stuff bet. was, what the most that's profitable right. stuff was. Yeah. And if all of a there's sudden one of those a, pops up. Yeah, there's yeah, now yeah, a like, third game that's being mentioned. I think that was like January 26th where his over-under for points was like four and a half. And he scored zero that night. And it, it got flagged because they usually only take on those props 
like online, like one thousand dollar bets right. is yeah. what they'll do on those props. And they had <laughs> reportedly, this is according to covers, which covers all aspect gambling stuff out of Vegas, that they had multiple. And who knows how many they mean by multiple? I doubt it's more than just. I bet it's more than just two accounts trying to place twenty thousand dollar bets on John Tate Porter unders. Wow. On his points under. So like, this is so bad. College bas college not basketball, college sports in general is just trying to get rid of prop betting, of player props in all of college sports. I think it's illegal yeah. in Ohio, Vermont, and uh, maybe Massachusetts or another one of those stats are player props illegal. Yeah, you, in you cannot col college player props. Yeah. College props are you can't bet on college props and player props in right. uh, Tennessee. Now, pro you can. You can bet on how many points LeBron James or Jaron Jackson Jr. Yeah, but see, I'm, I'm, I'm stunned that, that they would have that because, like, for the Grizzlies, for example, every night we come up with a yeah. three-leg parlay, and I always make it Grizzly-centric. And, like, there are nights where Jaron and Dez are the only two options on right. every category. So I'm thinking, why is there a dude on there that's only five and a half points? Yeah, that's weird to me because a lot of those guys that don't play as much – you don't see no. props on them. Like, yeah. uh, like there's no Scottie Pippen Jr. props. You no, know? I, like, I, I, find... in most props, I mean, they'll start at 10 points. Right. You know, right. you'll have guys that will score at least double figures. Um, so that, that confused me. But I, I think you're right, Rosary. This is, I, I, this is an example to me of why the argument that you hear from everybody that has come out over the last couple of days of g gambling legalization is bad for sports it's not because look how fast this was figured out right they figure it out because now fast. it's yeah. regulated in such a way that this stuff can't happen yeah and if, if players are making too much money today yeah. to be thinking they can make an extra buck like gambling. if i tried to bet on an nba game that's what we're not allowed to bet nba wnba yeah. g league nba draft two WNBA draft to kaylee uh, we can't bet you on can't bet any it. of this stuff have you not taken the seminar, CJ? Yeah, I mean, make you I, take, yeah. yeah, I had to take it. Yeah. Do I retain so, any of that? No. <laughs> you seem so if I <laughs> do that races. right now, if I tried to, well, tomorrow, yeah. I would be in their office fired. Like yeah. tomorrow, because they know they have a tracking on it. Yeah. They've got your social security number, all these accounts that you have online with all the various books. They've got your, they've got all of your information, and it's immediately flagged. And, and I think that's that's why it's it's good because that won't happen because in the past, if things like that have happened, it's super suspicious. Yeah. And I mean, we've seen it in colleges where it's happened in some college programs. It's become super suspicious, and then all of a sudden, it's shady bookmaking deals and and everything. And, and dudes can get in a heck of a lot of trouble for it. Schools can get in a lot of trouble for it. Uh, but now that it's legal, it's. It's re it's regulated and regulated very well to where I, if there are oddities, we, we can find out. And I, I think that's wonder, a harsh lesson that every athlete needs to learn. So the biggest thing that I want to can like, so there's like 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 DraftKings. Sure. If he put a bet on himself for how for much it was to he apparently made a lot of money doing this. Can they sue him? Who? Can Draft like DraftKings Draft or the, the sports can they sue John Tay Porter? Because per, uh, because he has control over whether or not he hits those numbers or not. And if he's betting against himself, he is actively doing something to sabotage that number. And it hurt their business, presumably. Yeah. Yeah. And it's... And, like, you, you can make the case for some guy. Like, if you bet Jason Tatum to score over 25 and a half points and Jason Tatum goes out there and shoots four for 17. You know, like... But if Jason Tatum's not betting on Jason Tatum's not trying to actively hurt your business, it's just he has a bad night. Like, right. he just but if John D. Porter is betting on himself to go under all of these numbers, betting on himself and then going out there and purposely missing shots or just not shooting, and then making money off of your app doing so, like, I mean, I feel like there's damages there somewhere. To your point, Fish, about the regulation being a part of it, like, I mean, how, how long ago did this Otani thing happen that we're just now finding out about? 
because it, it wasn't it was, through a regulated correct. sports book, right? Correct. Like it was it was through some guy and some bookie in LA. And they who, weren't even looking for that. Yeah. They, they were just, just looking to shut down his illegal sports book. And they kind and of stumbled like, on this. They're going yeah. through all the paperwork and everything. They're like, uh, we know this name, Shohei Otani. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. The, the, <laughs> <laughs> just got up and walked off. The, the let's talk about NCAA tournament right, let's gambling. Let's get into the uh, let's NCAA talk about gambling tournament. How are your brackets? Terrible. Yeah, I've still, I still got, got two Final Fours left. Yeah, I still got UConn. I've I, got uh, I've got uh, Marquette and Purdue left. I lost uh, Auburn. Holy crap, Bruce Pearl! How the hell you lose to Yale? That's ridiculous. Um, and I lost St. Mary's. That game was fun. Though. I believe Gary Parrish. Gary Parrish said, if you go from December on, St. Mary's has played like a top eight team in the country, according to all the advanced metrics. And yeah. uh, they just they just crapped all over the floor. Yeah. They had to pause the game and clean it up. It Where did you have them? It was just Elite runny. eight? I had them in the Final Four. Final Four, I had them St. Elite Mary's. eight. Yeah. I had Baylor in the championship game. They're disgusting. Mm. Wow, that's, that's tough. That's tough. I like that freshman on their team. That kid, Jacoby Walter. Yeah, I like that kid. He's like a top ten draft yeah. prospect. That kids. Yeah, but I, like I got that five of my Jai elite eight. Kobe combined. It's it's Ja Kobe. Ja yeah. Kobe. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I got five of my elite eight left. Three of my final four. Who do I have left in the elite? So I, I feel okay still if things go my way the rest of the way. But I, it, I, I, I have to have. I picked UConn to win it all, and I know that's terrible odds because like there's such an overwhelming favorite, but mm -hmm. I still think they're gonna win it all. Yeah. All right, I uh, I have Houston uh, winning it all. They're not going to. Roser, who you got winning it all? Houston barely uh, beat I Texas picked, a and um, <laughs> Purdue. Purdue. Like I have Purdue in the final I four. Purdue. And CJ, who do you have winning it all? I got. Uh, I do believe I got UConn. Yeah, I got UConn, Creighton in the championship. UConn winning it all. I lost Baylor and I took a long shot on Colorado. All right. Let's I have one, two, three, four. I have five of my elite eights left. Houston, Marquette, Purdue, Tennessee, Arizona. Right. I lost Auburn, Drake, and St. Mary's. I had to go with the guys, Drake. You know, they helped us out so Drake, much yeah, a couple yeah, years ago. Last year. Forever have a place in the odds couple's yeah, heart. I had them winning a, a game. One yeah. of my underdog. My, my, they should have won that game. My biggest underdog Took is still alive, throw. Alabama. Alabama? CJ got upset about that. game's going to be the most fun that, that he said I couldn't pick Alabama because they're, they're not a, they're not a long shot. What do you mean they're a four seed? That's a four seed. Yeah. That's a top four seed. Top four, four seeds are top a, four, a four seeds seed from the, the tournament SEC. last year. A four That's seed not won the a long shot. They were a long shot. Everybody was surprised when a four seed. Yeah, won it. they were. It's it's not normal for a four seed to win <laughs> the whole you. thing. You don't see it a ton. They're no. a freaking four seed. That means they're <laughs> one of the top sixteen teams in the nation. Yeah. It's three hundred and sixty something of these teams. 16 is not a, a long shot. No. To me, it is. Good. <laughs> and uh, that's what matters. Do, do we have the graphic with the futures? Uh, the uh, There we go. Uh, let's see. That's that is the region. south region. Um, you want the championship futures? Yeah, championship. I'm do sorry. We, do we have the championship futures? Jalen's trying to get that now. Okay. I don't know if we have it. All right. Well, UConn is the... Uh, there there it is. There we go. UConn, the favorite. Houston... Number two, so followed you're by telling me Purdue. if you put money on Alabama off this list, you wouldn't think it's a long shot. They're the bottom team on the list. They're Com almost cut off on the screen. Co comparatively speaking, sure. All right, but fine. What, to Done. start to start the tournament, there were sixty some teams behind them. Yeah, and my pick looks pretty good now, doesn't it? They're oh still my alive. gosh! What's what's the numbers on that? Plus thirty six hundred. Yeah. Oh that's wow. It's a long shot. I like that. Come uh, on. Who else on the list? Uh, I like Illinois. Uh, plus, that's plus thirty two hundred. Illinois is not bad. They've got athletes. Um, they got to do who I, I just straight It's score. weird, though. I watched, when I watched Illinois in that Big Ten tournament, I was not, like, blown away by no. them or anything. No. Um, Didn't they lose them? Who they lose to in that? They, they but I the wasn't blown they away by... Yeah. I wasn't blown away by North Carolina when I've seen them this year. And I think North Carolina looked pretty damn good. against. I mean, like, they yeah. just decided against Michigan State. Like, I had Michigan State plus four and a half in that game. Oh, that was and it felt like even when the game's like sitting there like seven, eight points in the second half, yeah. like under 10 to go. I'm like, Dude, they got no chance. Like they're not yeah. going to be able to score enough against Carolina. And then Carolina eventually turned up and ran away with it. UConn looks awesome. But for most of the season, I thought there were three teams, Connecticut, Houston, Purdue. And still, they're the best three teams. They have the best three odds. But I feel like because it's the tournament now, that other teams are capable of winning it. Yeah. Yeah. 
you know, three weeks ago, I would have said no. I would have taken those three over anybody probably. But now, once you get to this point, you're like, this team's playing really well, or this team's getting a little lucky. This team's gotten yeah. on a roll that I, I, I like Marquette, uh, North Carolina, who you mentioned. Um, Iowa State's an interesting team. I, I think Illinois, Alabama's interesting. If Al Alabama hits threes, they can beat anybody. They, can, they scored I mean, 110 points against yeah. whoever that was, Ohio State. Like, so I, I think it is more open than how Charleston. I felt a month yeah. ago. I don't want to say this out loud, but whatever. I'm kind of confident in Tennessee right now, right? Like they played that terrible game in the second round. That's a game was like, uh oh, knew that game was coming for Tennessee, and they still and they won. won. Yeah. And so, oh, if they've got the bad game out of their system, well, now Dalton Connect, Ziegler, and Rick Barnes, like, they, they should be back to playing high-level offensive ball, and that's a dangerous team, especially with a Dalton Connect who can go out there and get buckets from wherever he is on the, on the court. All right. All right. Yeah, Tennessee worries me because anytime it just, like, they will – <laughs> the first the three minutes of a game, they will run offense, run oh, offense, oh, run offense, and it looks great. And then they get under 10 minutes, and my God, Rick Barnes is just like, all right, we're going to stop. <laughs> I thought I was the only one who noticed We're going to hold the ball here. We're just going to pass it back and forth right here at the perimeter, and the shot clock's going to get 10 or 8 or 7, and then Dalton Connect's going to try to go one-on-one. -on -one. Like, that's what the offense becomes anytime the game is under 10 minutes. And I'm like, this is, this is why you don't get to the Final Four anymore. Like, yeah. TJ Ford got you there. But, like, that, that's been my biggest com one of my bigger complaints about the tournament so far is coaches doing that, where they just stop running offense six, seven minutes left in the game. And it is, hey, we're just going to try and run the shot clock out because we don't think you can score enough. And then look up. Oregon, this happened to Oregon. Now, Oregon might have been legit tired, but this happened to Oregon where they're running offense, they're flowing, Kusnard and the big Dante, they're getting things going. And then with like six minutes left, like, okay, hold the ball. Let's just hold it and see it's what happens. Ridiculous. We're, we're going to run this shot clock out because we think we can stop them from scoring. And they just couldn't. You know it. who doesn't do that? UConn. Good team. Yeah. UConn's up like 35, and they're like freaking running backdoor lob plays. And yelled like at. They're freaking running all over them. UConn is, man. Call timeouts. God, they look awesome. Um, I'm doing well in my women's bracket. I like Gonzaga, too. They're fun. My Who's women's bracket, 13-3 and three in the second round. Nice. I lost the Final Four team. Oh, yeah? I had Maryland. Mm. I wanted I, to take a shot. I wanted to take a shot with, uh, with, with, uh, with one of those, you know, Long shots. I still got all Elite Eight left, so that is good. I've uh, got in my Iowa, bracket. South Carolina, and who's the one seed in the S other region? Stanford? No. The UConn? Oh, UConn. I've got UConn, yeah. Okay. Is Geno still coaching? Yeah. And you had Marylinda? I had who Maryland. Yeah, I, had a, I had the Colorado women as my long shot on the – and does that count as – they're a five seed. It's only one less than Alabama. I got them as a long shot also. Accidentally, I went over to our good friends over at Southland and placed a couple of wagers. None of them hit. Uh, but I thought I was picking Colorado men to advance out of the region. You got to read at those little kiosks. I ended up placing a bet on the Colorado women to win it all. They're good. <laughs> I, they're, like it's, it's like a $1,500 payout. I mean, so I'm yeah, a Buffalo, baby. They got to play Iowa now on ah, Saturday. Like that. But they're pretty good. Because they ain't going to get calls. No. It, it will not get called. The only mistake the women's bracket made was Iowa should have potentially played LSU in the Final yeah, Four. Yeah. Because that would have been a huge game. Yeah. And then whoever would win to take on South Carolina would be a huge LSU's game. LSU's still well. alive. Yep. LSU's playing Iowa potentially in the next. On they got, they got UCLA. Game. LSU UCLA is going to be a great game. UCLA's okay. yeah. got a, a chick who's 6'7. And she couldn't, she couldn't move. So they got to sit. And LSU's got all that size on their end yeah. with Reese and, and Johnson. They, UCLA's got the 6'7 chick. The article from Kim Mulkey's got to drop soon, the way she was talking it's in coming. that damn, damn presser. Like, it's going to drop tomorrow. Still hadn't dropped yet. So there'll be that. Yeah, that LSU-UCLA game I'm excited for. Yeah, and I will take on CJ's Colorado Buffaloes. And then uh, if they both win, then they'll Lane face each Buffalo. other. In, in the Elite Eight. Our Buffaloes. Are yes. We all Buffaloes. All yeah. Buffalo. Yeah. Go Buffs. All right. Let's well, go to Southland and play the Buffalo. <laughs> oh, I'm wrong with the Buffalo. <laughs> well, 
Wait, but is there a better no. feeling? There's not a better fin feeling gambling for me than being at the the what, running Buffalo slot machine and the Buffalo start running. Yeah. Like it's yeah. special when it's the Buffalo amazing. start running. It's amazing. I it's love great. it. Yeah. Goated. That is that is a that is a feeling. Go Buffalo. Go Buffalo. Go. All right, we'll take a break here. Shout on, out to Ralphie. We'll take a break here on the Odds Couple. You're on Grind City Media. Justin Timberlake. The Forget Tomorrow World Tour. Live in Memphis. Justin Timberlake. FedEx Forum, Saturday, November 23rd. Get tickets this Thursday at 10 a.m. at LiveNation.com. The brand new single, Selfish, is available to stream and download now. For more, hit up JustinTimberlake.com. We're going to give you our opinions on the winners and losers of this year's 2024 NBA trade deadline. I've got two winners and a loser. What do you have? For a winner, I'd go with, I think, Boston. I like them getting Xavier Tillman. You got a loser? I have a loser. Who is it? I think all of us. I think all of us lost this because it was kind of just boring. IMHO with Lang Whitaker and me, Kelsey Wright Johnson, on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Real country music with Cody Johnson live Saturday, April 13th at FedEx Forum. Country's best. The Leather Tour with Cody Johnson with special guest Justin Moore also featuring Drake Milligan. VIP and reserve seats on sale at Ticketmaster.com in the FedEx Forum box office. Cody Johnson. Electric, rowdy, intense. They bring the same mentality that they bring anywhere into the building. If they were mad about something, they're bringing it in. If they were happy about something, they're bringing it in. So we need all that energy times a thousand. Welcome back to The Odds Couple on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Here's Rob Fisher and Lang Whitaker. Welcome back, everybody. Oh. This is The, the Odds oh, Couple. Uh, it is week uh, 31 here on Chapter 5. 31! Yeah. So uh, how about that? Uh, we uh, we got uh, we got a lot to, uh, we got to get into these games these uh, these sweet sixteen games we'll get into that we got some fish nuggets oh, coming up nice. on the show uh, also we have uh, we'll talk a little baseball and uh, they're getting started tomorrow uh, or not tomorrow yeah tomorrow right Thursday, Thursday. Yeah. yeah tomorrow and uh, also the UFL CJ's going to break down the UFL uh, for us that's coming up this is week thirty one what's who's what's the best number thirty one in sports Greg Maddox. Greg Maddox is a good one. Probably the best. I was Reggie Miller was thirty one. I was top of my head. I don't know. It's got to be some NFL players who wore thirty one. Hmm. Yeah. College I'm football. Sure. I don't know. We'll think about it. We'll think about it. Uh, all right. Uh, let's start with the uh, the South. We got a couple of games in the South. We got the uh, the one, two, the four, and the eleven. NC State, the eleven. How much fun is the NC State's big fella to watch? Oh yeah, uh, little Zebo, big Zebo. Yeah. He's bigger than Zebo. Uh, Houston is the favorite to win the South region, followed by Marquette, Duke, and then NC State. All NC State has done is win, win, win. You see the lines for the weekend as well for that opening round matchup. Houston, four and a half uh, against Duke. Houston beat Texas A&M in overtime, led by 13 with 340 to go. Uh, Houston, five and one against the spread, taking on ACC opponents. Duke is 10 and three against the spread in their last 13, but one and six against the spread their last seven as an underdog. Ooh. Ooh. How about I like that? Marquette. And I, did I kind of like Marquette. By the way, you said Greg Maddox. Who else did you say? 31, Reggie Miller. Yeah, Reggie Miller. Uh, Jamal Lewis. Mm. Mike Piazza. No, steroids. Mm, wow. A legend. Grant Fuhr. Grant Fuhr. Grant Fuhr's great a good one. one. I take... Dave Winfield. Mm. Oh. Great one. John Lester. Mm. John Lester. Here. Cam Chancellor. I think it's Maddox and Grant Fuhrer. Cujo. Curtis Joseph. Curtis Joseph. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right. Some All right. timers right there. Uh, a couple nuggets on the Marquette NC State game. Uh, Marquette, a six and a half point favorite. Uh, they beat Colorado by four. They were a four and a half point favorite. Uh, hit that one. So that was good. Uh, 11 and one against the spread as a favorite for Marquette. 11 and one against the spread their last 12 as a favorite. North Carolina State, they have won seven games this postseason. They are five and two against the spread in those seven games. They beat Oakland by six as a six and a half point favorite, so did not cover that one. Uh, NC State, however, five and zero oh against the spread their last five as a dog. Nice. Uh, Roser, you said Houston Marquette? Yeah, I like Marquette. Lang? And Houston, yeah. I like Marquette. You like Marquette? I, I think Marquette may kill NC. NC State's not good, right? Like, I've seen They're not very good. They're, they're kind of hot, though. They're, 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 they're and that can well. happen. It does. It's ha- it's, it, it happens. But, but they've, they've, this, at some point, this I think this out. break kind of brings you back. Yeah. Maybe. Be- because yeah. you were on fire in the conference tournament. You went straight from the conference tournament. Did they play in the play in? No, about to, not the play in. But, get, but then they had to play Thursday after yeah. going five and five days. Yeah. And they're about to get the shocker. And they are. Yeah. So I like Marquette and Houston. As well, and uh, I'll take Houston to win that one. I'll take I don't love that Duke team. I like the McCain kid. I like him. Filipowski is mid, just too finesse. We're, we're and that's the issue is the finesse. Like that's fine for most teams, but yo, you're playing a Houston team that Dogs. only wants to hit. That Houston Texas A and M game should be illegal in bat. And I like physical basketball. It should be illegal. We complained about the foul calls in that game. And the refs could have called 20, 25 more fouls. Houston is going to go out there and try and bully you off the court. And if Duke can't stand up to it, and if Filipowski can't stand up to it, well, then Duke will be going home after yeah. that game. And I, I don't think that they can. You can't all of a sudden, after not playing physical the whole season, after playing more of a finesse style the entire season, in a one-game scenario, be like, oh, all right, we're turning the physicality on. No, that's not how that yeah. works. I think Houston and Marquette both advance. I don't. I, North Carolina State is a great story. It's fun to watch them, but it's it's time for them to get up out of here. I think Marquette bounces them out out of there. And we have Houston Marquette, and I like Houston in that one also. All right. uh, in the Midwest region, Purdue is the favorite, plus one twenty, followed by Tennessee, plus two ten, Creighton plus four fifty, and Gonzaga plus five hundred. Gonzaga, a five and a half point dog to Purdue, opened at four and a half, went to five and a half. Purdue blasted Utah State, one hundred six to sixty seven. They're on an eight and one straight up run. Gonzaga, meanwhile, has covered five of their last six after crushing Kansas by 21. However, they are one and five against the spread and taking on Big Ten opponents in their last six. <laughs> so that Kansas team, like, they just fell apart in the second half. Bill Self even mentioned they don't like have any, they didn't have any players. depth. Like, yeah, they didn't they have they no depth. They ran out of gas. They fell apart. Gonzaga is. They might be, I mean, they are with UConn, like when they are going offensively, like they're, I mean, they play great basketball. They do like that ball pops around, they move, they fly around and, it, and it's fun. This is a can, this is a tempo game. Like Gonzaga wants to get out. Gonzaga wants to run. They will pace with their offense and Purdue is going to want to slow this thing down. Um, I'd probably lean towards Purdue, um, but I mean, Gonzaga's the more fun team. <laughs> we're we're going to learn. We're going to learn some things about Zach Eady in in this game right here. Because my question is, don't we say that every game? Won't we say the next one if they win this one too? I, we'll say it, but it won't be true. Like this is legit. Gonzaga gets, according to my notes in the workplace slave book. Yeah, workplace uh, slave. Gonzaga gets fifty eight and a half of their points, fifty eight and a half percent of their points off of twos. Like you said, they want to run up and down, and they want to get to the basket. Can Zach Eady anchor your defense? Can he be the last line of defense for you in this level and then maybe project out to be the last line of defense for you when he gets to the NBA? I'm not sure. I don't think so. Some do. I don't. And we'll find a little bit more out about if, him I against this Purdue Gonzaga can team. keep it a half-court game, yeah. okay. then maybe he can defend the rim. But if yeah, he's trying to run I mean, even in three seconds. So yeah. like, I mean, you just stand in front if of the he goal. Can, if he's trying eating. to chase him down on the break and get blocks and stuff like that. I don't, even, in, even in the half-court, though, right? Like... Yeah. They're, Gonzaga's going to the rim. Gonzaga's running action with the thought being, hey, if you pop out at three open, 
Give a little shot fake, shot fake, and then see if you can't get all the way to the rim. Can like, they get that's, him in that's foul what they're trouble. gonna do. And that's the other question: Can they get him in foul trouble? But no, Edie is a smart enough defender to he'll just let dude shoot. He will not go up to contest because he knows. All right, I might get in foul trouble. What's I'm not by the way, this is nine straight Sweet Sixteens for Gonzaga. That is impressive. so impressive. Yeah, and it would be ten the one year the tournament didn't exist. They were like. 32 and one or something yeah. in the regular season. Like, Does anyone think, what's the deal with Purdue's uniforms? Like, why do the why are the numbers like two inches big on the back of the jerseys? Have you noticed that? Like, yeah, it looks like baseball. It's weird. Yeah, it looks like the new MLB ones. Like, the numbers are tiny on the back of the jerseys, and the, it looks like the the Hickory High team out there. Like, I don't, <laughs> I don't know what's well, going on. I mean, All they're right. kind of same close close <laughs> enough. Yeah. Purdue by five and a half. Pick it or park it. Park it. Yeah, I'd park it. I think Purdue's gonna win. I don't know if five and a half. I would take Gonzaga because I think they win this one straight up. Ooh, I, the, only, I the only game that I would pick so far is that Marquette game. I, Marquette. I think Houston beats Duke, but I'm not laying a number with Houston. You never know what's gonna, you're, what you're going to get from them offensively. Like I, The one seeds are 8-0, 7-1 against the spread. The only one that didn't cover was Houston against Texas A&M. So, like, you don't. I don't know. I don't. That's why I wouldn't touch them. To, that's why I just wouldn't touch the line against Duke. But What's the line on Houston Duke again? It's like four and a half. Okay, I'll take Houston. And then McCain that. kid can get hot from. They got a couple guys who can get hot from three. Like I don't know. I just don't. I don't trust Houston to cover a spread. But I hope Houston beats Duke. But Marquette's the only one that I would bet so far. All right, uh, number two Tennessee against number three Creighton Tennessee, a two and a half point favorite. Uh, Tennessee beat Texas by four as a six and a half point favorite. Mm. Also uh, <laughs> Tennessee. Ten of uh, their 12 against the Big East opponents have gone under the total 144 and a half. Creighton, meanwhile, they're on a 9 and 2 against the spread run, 5 and 1 against the spread their last six. Uh, they had the double OT win against Oregon as a three and a half point favorite. That was one of the greatest covers uh, that I've had all season. Because there, no, there was no way for them to cover I had Oregon. unless they went to <laughs> overtime. And then there was no way for them to cover unless they went to double overtime. And then they still had to beat their ass. And they did. And it was amazing that's, that's cover. Kusnar and them just ran out of gas. Uh, I, Creighton in the month of March, 15-3 and three against the spread. 15-3 and three against the spread. Their last 18 in the month of March. Tennessee, two and a half. Pick it or park it. I'd park that one. I do I, not trust Tennessee or Rick Barnes or anything to have anything to do with Tennessee, so I'm staying away. I mean, I have to live up to my mantra of GBO. <laughs> Go Big yeah. Orange. Go Big Orange. My but mantra. I will say um, everybody's betting Tennessee. Yep. And so, um, you know, <laughs> the gambling – Mine would tell me to uh, do just bet or bet Creighton. Yeah, don't bet so like it. Bet bad. Creighton, but GBO, <laughs> go Vols. Where's Penny and the Tigers? Oh, hey, wow, here. what's going on? What, what's they this the tourney. <laughs> They're in the NIT. Go Vols. <laughs> Aren't they in the NIT? They won the NIT. Go Vols. Three years, oh, ago? years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 CJ, I take Tennessee top three team in defensive efficiency. Marquette allows a lot of shots at the rim. Creighton? Uh, Marquette, Creighton. I'm getting my Big East schools confused. Creighton allows a lot of shots at the rim. And if Dalton Connect decides, yo, I'm going to put my head down and I'm going to go, I, there's nothing they, they can do. And say so it. I'm, yeah, I'm taking Tennessee minus the, the two and a half. GBO. I don't want to say that, but Rocky Top, it's let's go. G GBO. GBO, baby. I'm taking the balls uh, as well, minus the two and a half. GBO. I, I think what you were talking about earlier, CJ, you know, they had that scare. And they still won uh, the game, which could have been a game in years past that, that they see, don't. But that's like part of what's the spread again? Two and a half. Two and a half, right? See, that's the thing. Like, Tennessee can be up like 10 with like five minutes to go. And then Rick Barnes <laughs> is just going to have someone hold the ball out front for, it's it really is. for 22 seconds. GBO! I, one thing I've noticed about Connect, though, man, if you're an NBA team looking at him, now, you'll have athletes out there, but, like, dude, that guy struggles to drive the ball against athletes. Yeah. Yeah. Like, when these teams, whether you, I saw it with St. Peter's against them. St. Pete saw it in the SEC tournament, and you saw it against Texas. In the SEC tournament in Texas, when teams would put more athletic players on them, on him, he had problems. All right. He had well, problems driving around them. Well, Dougie McBuckets-esque. Yeah, except Doug McDermott is better. Yeah. Doug McDermott, well, I mean, Dalton Connect's an All-American, too, so. 
Yeah. All right, in the East, we got uh, UConn as a 10-and-a-half-point favorite over San Diego State. UConn, they are the favorite in the conference at, or in the region at minus 230, followed by Iowa State Damn right plus they 420, are. Illinois plus 600, San Diego State plus 1,200. UConn and San Diego State opened at 9-and-a-half. UConn now at 10-and-a-half. They've covered eight of their last nine games. On the season, UConn 24-and-12 against the spread. San Diego State, they smoked Yale as a five and a half point favorite. UConn won this matchup last year in the national championship game as a seven and a half point favorite. They won it by 17. UConn minus 10 and a half against San Diego State. I'd take UConn. I'm, I'm certainly it. not taking San Diego State. No, like, I'm I'd taking take, UConn. I'd take UConn if I bet it. I, I, yeah, pick it, San, UConn. Because UConn doesn't mind beating the piss out of you. Yeah. They beat the crap out of the crap out of you. Yeah. You like UConn as I well. Love UConn. All right, CJ. San Diego State has to rebound. That's a large line, but I'm with everybody. I'm, I'm taking UConn. Yeah, why would like, you not bet take, on UConn? take UConn? Okay. What's the number? It's like uh, Adam Lefko kept saying over the weekend. It's now after who did San Diego State just beat Yale? They're like in the last three seasons. They're like 98 and six when they out rebound their opponent. Just crazy. So, so do that yeah. more. Ninety-eight yeah. and six when they out rebound their opponents. So uh, the good luck o- against UConn doing the, that. The other matchup's a good one. Iowa State one and a half over Illinois. That line has kind of flipped everywhere. ISU opened at two and a half, went down to a half, went down up to one and a half. Iowa State five and zero against the spread in the postseason. Illinois won six straight, five and one against the spread in that. They beat Duquesne by twenty-six as a nine and a half point favorite. However, they are one and five against the spread their last six against the Big Stay 12. Stay away. Iowa State minus one and a half against Illinois. Run. Uh, Run away. Run away. Yeah, I, I don't want anything to do with this. Yeah, I really don't want anything to do with this game. I, I'll root for Illinois because Iowa State kind of bores the crap out of me. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I kind of freaks me out. Might have them in a little parlay with UConn, though, Illinois. Iowa State? Illinois. Okay. Money line? Yeah, a little money line. I saw if you do uh, Illinois and UConn money line, it's like plus 133. Okay. So that's a way if you think UConn's going to win, you got to parlay it with another team, you know, on that night who's an underdog that you think can actually win, you know. It's not going to surprise me if Illinois wins, you know. Right. So. C- CJ? This is Illinois is the most efficient team on offense, according to Kim, Kim Palm in the nation. I would state the most efficient team on defense in the nation, according to Kim Palm. This is like going to be a fun battle of good on good, great on great. I would, in, in those cases, I take the team that's a bit better on offense, and that's Illinois, just because when the things get mucked up, and it will get mucked up, I trust Illinois to get a bucket more than I trust Iowa State. Iowa State, while they have four starters who average in double fi- figures, they don't have a Shannon on their team. They don't have somebody who's averaging 30 points per game over the, the last six. I think since the tournament season started, conference and NCAA, I think Shannon has av- – has their, he's five games, t- more than 26 points in each of those games. Like he's on right now. It's going to be hard to turn him off. So I will take uh, Illinois in that one. All right. I'm taking Illinois plus the points. Uh, I'm not even taking the points. I'm going Illinois money line uh, on this one against uh, Iowa State. Then we look at the West region where Arizona is the favorite to win the region, but plus money at plus 110. North Carolina plus 180. Alabama plus 410. And Clemson plus 950. North Carolina, four and a half point favorite against Alabama. UNC opened as a three point favorite. It's gone all the way to four and a half. They beat uh, Michigan State by 16 as a four and a half point favorite. They've covered five of their last seven. Alabama just three and six against the spread their last nine. Beat Grand Canyon by 11 as a five and a half point favorite. Carolina, four and a half against Alabama. Yeah. I mean, this is all is Alabama going to make threes? North Carolina looked pretty impressive. And North Carolina's got seniors. I like that point guard at Alabama, though. Yeah. Sears. You can see why they didn't care about Quinterly leaving. Martin Sears. GBO! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Couldn't care about Quinterly. That's yeah. terrible. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Alabama's GBO. really good. And they, I like Nate Oates a lot. I if like they hit threes, like, yeah. Yeah, Nate Oates is a really good coach. We'll see what Nate Oates has in store for North Carolina. This should be the most fun of the games, though. Like, you're talking teams. They're going to get up and down the court. They're going to run. Yep. It's going to be played I might fast. take Alabama money line. Oh, all right. 
Alabama money line. I mean, give me the get points. a little value there. Give me the four and a half points. Yeah, I, I I don't hate that at all. Um, but uh, I don't. I also don't trust Arizona. Go Heels. Go Heels. I, I like North Carolina. I I'll take North Carolina over Alabama. North Carolina and got the best. They, North they, Carolina they, has arguably the best jerseys in sports. And they're a, one of the three best teams left in the tournament, I think. So I'll take uh, Babcock and North Carolina. And then what was the other game? Uh, Arizona seven and a half against Clemson. I'm not touching I'll take that game. I'll take Arizona. I don't believe in Clemson at all. I, I don't know who number four is. He can shoot for Clemson. He can shoot. He's a solid player for the most part. But yo, he's slow, and you can hunt him out. Now he's usually on a power forward or somebody like that. But if you start running screens for your for your power forward, my man is not going to be able to keep up. You, I'm shocked that Texas A and who who lost to Clemson. One name, Baylor. Baylor. I'm shocked Baylor just stopped hunting him because they would put him in like double double down screen situations, and he's just lost out there. And then when he comes out to try and recover, you can shot fake and go by him and get to the rim. I think Arizona, uh, another one of those teams I didn't trust to start the tournament. I think they get to the Elite Eight. I think they fall in North Carolina, but I think they can get to the Elite Eight. Every time I watch Arizona play away from home this year, they were a nightmare as far as covering was concerned. So I was concerned about them going into the tournament. But I, I think they've kind of alleviated that uh, ill feeling from them? me. I trust them a little bit. And they're playing really well. And I think they're just a much better team uh, than Clemson is. The, this happens where teams get these roles and they get to the Sweet 16. But then the cream rises to the top. And I think the cream rises to the top this week in a lot of these games. Yeah. So I would take uh, Arizona minus the six and a half as well. 13 of the top 15 teams in Ken Palm all made it to the Sweet 16. Um, Syracuse and North Carolina State. Those are two who are in the Sweet Six, who are in the Sweet 16, not in the top 15 in Ken Palm. How about that? Do you want more nuggets? No! We'll do that when we return. This is the odds couple. We got nuggets. We got free picks. Everybody got free picks? Free picks sure. for tonight? And I got free picks? Uh, we'll give away some free picks. That's coming up uh, here as we close out the show. This is the odds couple here on Grind City Media. You saw with four seconds for the win. Yes! Marcus, one of the more competitive people you'll meet. Yeah, you lose. Their willingness to go out and try to compete every day, not just wait for a game, not wait for a regular season game, not wait for a playoff game, but every day. Is what made Mark special. He was a big part of that identity, right? And big part of that's why the, the team was so successful because they had that anchor in him. The Grizzlies, to this day, wouldn't be the Grizzlies without the contribution of Marcus Gasol. Take your fandom to the next level with the official Grizzlies app. Go all access and behind the scenes. It's got to be heavy defense. That's where it starts for us. Personalized to where you are and who you are. Get easy access to ticketing, the game day guide, and your own app customization right at your fingertips. Upgrade your experience and download the Grizzlies app today. Grizzlies looking for the hot hand. Jaron got the step, Woo! got the flush. There's no layups on that one. Electric. Rowdy, intense. They bring the same mentality that they bring anywhere into the building. If they were mad about something, they're bringing it in. If they were happy about something, they're bringing it in. So we need all that energy times a thousand. We were without internet from 11 in the morning until what ended up being around 8 o'clock at night. I'd be the first to go in an apocalypse. I just would not even know what to do. Chris is over here like... Who needs internet anyway? Let's just be one with the land. And I'm like frantic. I'm like, I can't do anything. Tune in to the Jessica Benson Show with CJ Hurt live every weekday at 8 a.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Welcome back to The Odds Couple on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Here's Rob Fisher and Lang Whitaker. Welcome back, everybody. It is the odds couple. Sorry, just getting in some bets. All right. 
Welcome back to the program. Uh, we got uh, some free picks uh, coming up here in a moment. Uh, also, CJ will uh, preview the UFL uh, for oh, us. Oh, yeah, I will. So we're looking forward to that. Why? And, uh, and, and, and Roser's oh, going to preview Major League crap. Baseball. No. So that'll be cool. I'm leaving. <laughs> uh, how about some nuggets? Is that all right? No. Can we do nuggets? I like nuggets. All right. Here we go. A couple nuggets for you. Only once have all four number one seeds made the final four. 2008. Is it going to happen this year? North Carolina, Memphis, UCLA, Kansas. Who's the first one out? Uh, North Carolina. Uh, Arizona. They're not a one They're seed. Two. I'd say North Carolina. Tennessee. Uh, no, I'm going to go Houston. I don't. Yeah. Houston? All right. Nugget number two. I'd go North Carolina. I trust their coach the least. Each, each of the past 13 tournaments has had at least one team seated number four or worse reach the final four. So you got San Diego State, Alabama, Clemson, Gonzaga, Duke. NC State, or Duke. You're saying those are long shots? <laughs> Nugget number three. There has not been a repeat champion since Florida in 2007. Since then, no defending champ has advanced past the Sweet 16. Ooh. UConn trying to do that this week. By the way, I would say of all those teams you just mentioned that could do it, I would say Alabama would be the pick of the fours. Because I could see Alabama beating North Carolina and then beating Arizona because they're going to play similar styles. Gonzaga, that's a, that's a lot to ask to beat Purdue and then have to beat either Creighton or Tennessee. And I think the yeah. same thing for Duke. Or NC State. Yep. So, yeah. All right, so Alabama trying to keep that streak alive. All right, the uh, Major League Baseball gets started tomorrow, Lang. Uh, of course, uh, you can always listen to Infield Fly podcast here on Grind yeah. City Media. It's a baseball podcast. Lang, baseball. myself, Keith Murphy, we talk baseball each and every week. Um, but with uh, baseball getting started, let's check out the futures for uh, Major League Baseball for the upcoming season. Los Angeles Dodgers are the favorite at plus 320, followed by the Braves at plus 450. They are viewed as the top two teams in the game by virtually everybody going into this season. Then you have Houston, the Yankees, Rangers, Orioles, Phillies, Blue Jays, Mariners, Twins, Rays, Cardinals, and Cubs. Wow. I tell you, list. the Rangers, the reigning champions, right? Plus 1,400. Yeah. They had old uh, Wyatt Langford had himself quite a spring training. He did. I've heard. Yeah. <laughs> I keep up with baseball cards. That's how I've heard that guy's name. I was going to ask, um, do you have a Wyatt Langford card? I, I do not. not. Yet? No, I do not. But there was a big, big ordeal about his uh, first Bowman Chrome uh, one of one rookie autograph. Oh. Someone had agreed to sell it to somebody for a certain price. Then the guy blew up in spring training, and the card is worth like 10 times more than that. So he backed out of that deal and is selling it to somebody else for a much higher price. Wow. I like it when, Anyways. when, whenever Roser like lists the, the actual card like that, yeah. the Bowman. Oh, I didn't give you what the total name of the card was. Whatever. I did not but give you that, like, that. Roser never sounds less cool than when he like goes through the whole. <laughs> yeah, card. It's just, it's straight up <laughs> nerd stuff. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, yeah. Baseball. But yeah. I Yankees. Go Yankees I think, and, uh, I, and the Yankees to play the Giants in the World Series. We talk, Oh, Yankees Giants. and the Giants in the oh, World Giants Series. Okay. Giants. All right. So that's my favorite team. So that's what I go for. Okay. Every year. Um, Lang, I, I think if you wanted to look at values on there, maybe well, Texas at again? plus 1,400 is not bad value. Not bad, but they're probably not going to repeat. Phillies? I mean, they've made they good runs two years. Yeah. That's a problem. Um, can you put the thing up again? Uh, the, the list of the – Yeah. She said. Uh, I mean, we talked about this on the podcast today, Fish. Tampa. Why not Tampa? Why not Tampa? One of these years, Why Tampa's going to click. I think Baltimore is too young. Um, and maybe Toronto. That's If you're looking for value. Toronto's, Toronto's got to do it with this group of players that they have. Yeah. Right. Vlad Jr. and Bo Bichette. Yeah. I know who yeah. they are. Who yeah. else do they have? Joe Carter. Yes. Uh, Joe Carter, Joe Carter, Dave Steeb, Dave Steeb, <laughs> Raleigh Fingers, Tony Fernandez is yes. out there. Uh, yeah, did yeah. Raleigh Fingers play for the Blue Jays? I don't think so. No, he was on Roger the Clemens. Raleigh Fingers Roger was Clemens. on the Brewers. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, Raleigh Fingers was Royals, on the Brewers. Maybe? Um, all right, uh, now the uh, other thing going on that, that's getting started this week is the UFL. It's uh, oh, the USL, US, oh, U, USFL and the XFL have merged. To form the UFL, and it yeah, starts yeah, yeah. this week. And here with the preview is CJ. Yeah! Check this out. 
So the teams from the USFL, you might be saying to yourself, who's coming over from the USFL? They only took four from each. The, The Showboats are coming. The Birmingham Stallions are coming. Houston Roughnecks are coming. And the Michigan Panthers are coming over from the USFL, from the XFL, Arlington Renegades, St. Louis Battlehawks, San Antonio, San Antonio Brahmas, and the D.C. Defenders. All right. Now, you guys might not be familiar with the rules. Let's get familiar with the rules real quick. It's football. Y'all know what it is. But they got the weird kickoff thing where everybody lines up 10 yards apart, yeah. and then they kick the ball off. Right. So that's the weird the rule. Now. Yeah, it's coming to the yeah. NFL. Instead of onside kicks, you get a 4th and 12. You convert 4th and 12 and you keep it moving. That's down 3 yards from 4th and 15. They really want you to convert that 4th and 12. After the touchdown, remember, you go for a 2 from the 2, you get 1 point. You go for 2 from the 5, you get 2 points. You go from 2 from the 10, you get 3 points. All right, so that's there. You can throw not 1, not 1. You can throw 2 forward passes behind the line of scrimmage. So there's that. Arlington did that last year. It's going to be so much fun. And then overtime, each team starts from the five. And they do it best of three. You get three attempts. You don't get three attempts. You try and score three different times from the five. Can you cut them off? And then, no, we're excited about this lane. (laughs) How can you not be excited about Bob Stoops and Wade Phillips coaching? How could you not be excited about, about Alabama great legend? A.J. McCarron playing football again. Yeah, but he cried every game last yeah, year. Yeah, it's beautiful. Oh, he did. It's Remember? beautiful. Yeah. That's the thrill of sports. It's emotional to watch. It's going to be good stuff all over the field. I can't wait. We'll check Twitter. Let's check out the futures for the <laughs> UFL champion. The Birmingham Stallions are the favorite at plus 270, followed by the D.C. Defenders at plus 350. The Battle Hawks of St. Louis, plus 490. And then Arlington at plus 700. Then Memphis plus 800, Michigan Panthers plus 1,000. You got San Antonio at plus 1,300 and Houston at plus 1,300 at the bottom. Birmingham has a real interesting quarterback battle going on right now. Matt Corral and uh, Martinez, Adrian Martinez, are battling out to see who's going to be QB1. And we all love watching Matt Corral play at yeah. Ole Miss, and we love Martinez playing at Nebraska. They also got uh, my man Taco along the defensive line. There's a lot of talent <laughs> out there in Birmingham is what I'm trying to tell you people. Taco is the guy who's saying, putting on the Ritz, isn't it? I think <laughs> so. That was yeah. Taco, yes. Oh, my goodness. There is you it, go. Yeah, I remember D.C. was pretty good last year. Yeah. And the, they ran the ball a lot. They had the two-quarterback situation. Yep. But, yep. like, I don't know how much carryover there is from last year. Like, I assume most of these coaches are gone. Most of the players are gone. The offensive coordinators are gone. They all found other jobs. Well, you still got some defensive coordinators uh, still. That everything in me feels like Greg Robinson is still around. I could be mistaken. But there, that's the thing, right? There's going to be some turnover, a, a higher, I think, turnover than we see in other other leagues because guys are trying to get to the NFL, both coaches like the and coach, players. The coach and the GM of the D.C. team defenders was Pep Hamilton. Yeah. And now he's the offensive coordinator of the Houston Texans. Well, that's that's the thing. You got to you got to keep it rolling. It's, yeah. a, it's a lot like college in that where he got dudes back leave. In the NFL. <laughs> yeah, he was so good at the. Thing. I mean, the Texans were good last year. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, how about some free picks? Free picks. We got some free picks. Hey. Who wants to start? I'll go first. All right. What you got? Baseball starting. I'm gonna go National League Cy Young. The best bet. I mean, the the, the leading contender is Spencer Strider. Yeah. He's plus three eighty. I'm going to go Max Freed from the Braves, plus 1,200. Ooh. So you bet 10 bucks, you could win 130. He uh, had a sort of injury plagued season last year. Little things, blisters, sore shoulders, right. Braves. But the Braves score a ton of runs, and he's going to have a chance to win every game. And Strider's the A starter now, so Freed's going to get your second group of player, you know, maybe the second best pitcher going against him. And uh, he's in a contract year. Oh, the old contract year award. Yeah. Max Freed plus twelve hundred. Max Freed plus twelve hundred. All right. Sorry. Roser. Uh, free picks. This is uh, this is going to be a futures bet, but I love mm-hmm. it. Um, there's a bet you can make right now. It's already gone down too, so it was plus six fifty. It's now five to one, and it's going to seem crazy, except it's not if you keep up with golf. Uh, you can get Scotty Scheffler to finish top 10 in all four of the majors this year for plus 500. I got it at plus 650. It's plus 500. I'd take it now because after he probably is top 10 at the Masters without it. I mean, like, he very well, very well may just beat the crap out of everybody at Augusta. Um, but if not, top 10 is easy for him. This guy can just put 
average to poorly and still finish top 10. Um, so when he putts well, he's going to kill everybody. It's the closest. It's like what he's doing is like the closest thing to Tiger we've seen. We'll see if he if he can go on a run in the majors this year. But I think top ten in the majors, all four majors, is easy for him. All right, Scotty Scheffler, five to one. Is that yeah, what you said? Five to one. Wow. Top ten, all four majors. He's plus four hundred to win the Masters. If that tells you. All right. Uh, I CJ. Catch that yet. All right. CJ. Future. Yeah. Nashville Predators. Future. Plus Tenders. plus three thousand to win it all. Do that. Place that. The Nashville Predators. Oh. Plus 3,000 win it all. Go ahead and do that. They are on a hell of a streak. They've won. Is that soccer? That's That's hockey. Hockey. They've scored scored at least a point in a record, a franchise record, 18 straight games. They've got a defenseman in Roman Josie who is a great two-way defenseman. They can score on one line, two line, the third line, the fourth line, they can score across their lines. In He's fact, goated. it was a it was the fourth line against Vegas that got the goal that sparked the run that led to them winning in overtime 5-4 against Vegas. They got a great goalie, top three in saves amongst players, amongst goalkeepers who qualify a 909 save percentage as well. It's all about with hockey, Rob. You can attest to this. Mm-hmm. When do you get hot? And the Nashville Predators are hot right now. And you can get them before everybody else hops on and drives that line uh, down or up or however you, yeah. you think about it. So take the Nashville Predators plus 3,000 wow. to win the Stanley Cup. Wow, that's a good one. I like that. All right, I have a couple of games tonight. My, right. Mine are kind of boring. NIT? Uh, NIT action. Uh, we're going to go with uh, Seton Hall uh, minus the six against UNLV. Hall doing it for Andre tonight. Barrett and Eddie Griffin. Play of and the night. Kevin Willard. RIP. The play of the night is uh, VCU plus the seven and a half against Utah. Utah. VCU doing plus the seven and a half Williams against Utah. Jr. And then uh, my hockey play tonight, we're going to take Buffalo. Uh, we're going to do a 60-minute bet uh, because they're about a one, <laughs> minus 150. Uh, but if you have Buffalo winning in 60 minutes, it's down to minus 105. So pretty much even money there. We'll take Buffalo in 60 minutes over the Ottawa Senators Doing tonight. Doing it for Alexander Mogilny. That's right. All right. That's going to do it, man. And Pat LaFontaine. Woo, busy show. Told you we had a lot of show today. That was good stuff. Big show. Was a good lot stuff. of show. Next week on the program, we'll be back on Thursday next week. And uh, we'll talk NCAA Final Four. We'll talk women's Final Four. And uh, WrestleMania. We'll talk That's WrestleMania right. next week. Because, you know, we've been going to the, to, yeah, the, yeah. To the wrestling. And so we're kind of up on it. Uh, we'll talk about that. Fish, we're, we're, we're up on game. We're up on game. Yeah, absolutely. We are. The Rock beat the crap out of Cody Rhodes Monday, Monday night. Monday night, yeah. he did. Yeah, he it's pretty good. Yeah. And, uh, and CJ will have his picks for the uh, UFL week, too. Let's go. So look forward to that. That's going to do it for us uh, here today. Thank you for joining us uh, here on The Odds Couple. We'll be back again with you next Thursday, live at 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock. Until then, for CJ, for Roser, for Lang, I'm Fish. Have a great afternoon, everyone. We'll talk to you next week here on The Odds Couple on Grind City Media. Listening to The Odds Couple on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Tune in next time with Rob Fisher and Lang Whitaker.